Edge of the Empire is an exciting role-playing game that's just the first of the entire Star Wars experience that Fantasy Flight Games is going to deliver with its role-playing lines. Edge of the Empire focuses on the scum and villainy, those dark, seedy parts of the Empire. People who live on the fringes, not just of space, but also the fringes of society. But early on in the process, we realized that we're not just really des designing one role-playing game, but we're designing an entire experience. And that experience needs to reflect Star Wars. But since Star Wars means so many different things to so many different people, after some original meanings, we realized that just one game book was not going to do it. So in order to be able to do Star Wars justice, we decided to go ahead and split the experience up into three separate core rulebooks. That way, three of the most important parts of what defines Star Wars could each get their own information, their own game. There's going to be the Edge of the Empire, Age of Rebellion, and Force and Destiny. And these three games are going to each explore one of the core facets of the Star Wars universe. Our first game, Edge of the Empire, we wanted to focus on the experience of smugglers, of bounty hunters, of fringers, people living on the, the edges of civilization, figuratively and literally. When we get to Age of Rebellion, we're gonna be able to go extremely deep into this military struggle, into the spies, into the diplomats, what this, what this is really like playing this small band of rebels that is hopelessly outnumbered in the struggles that they face. And then when we get to Force and Destiny, we can really explore the Force in amazing detail and depth that we would never be able to do if it was just part of a bigger book that tried to cover everything. One of the most unique elements to Edge of the Empire is the obligation system. Obligation is a narrative tool that allows the GM to add more depth to the session and to the story that he's crafted. In the fringes, on the edge, in this area on the edge of the Empire, nothing comes for free. Everybody owes somebody. You have to decide, what does my character owe, how much does he owe, and who does he owe it to? Well, all of these things can be reflected in obligation. In fact, obligation is so important that it's one of the very first steps in character creation. Whether that obligation is to a, is to a family member or to a, to a gangster or to somebody you've been in business with, whatever it could be. It could be that you owe them money. It could be somebody's put a hit out on you. It could just be that you're, you're running from some obligation from your family. Perhaps you don't want to be in the family business. Whatever it can be, the options are, are pretty endless. Undertaking more obligation at character creation means you get more experience with which to construct your character, or it allows him to start with more money to purchase more gear that would make him a more formidable adversary. Both very, very appealing short-term um, rewards. One of the things I really like about Edge of the Empire is the dice mechanic system. But this system doesn't just apply to Edge of the Empire. It's a robust mechanic that works for all three games in the line. And the mechanic is represented by what we're calling narrative dice. The uh, dice in Edge of the Empire um, consists of seven separate dice with eight distinct symbols. There are three positive dice, three negative dice, and the force die. Each one of the dice says something specific about what happens, and uh, that's always open to interpretation by the GM or by the players. Uh, it's a very open system, a very narrative system, uh, but there's a lot of options and a lot of flavor that can come out of every single dice pool. It's not just pass-fail, it is, it is really what happens, what is the story here, you know, like how, does, how did I pass and fail? I might be in a shootout with some Gamorrean gangsters in a warehouse, and I miss my shot, but I blow out the lights behind him, and the warehouse goes dark, and that allows my, my partners to sneak around and flank him and get a bonus the next round, right? Every roll perpetuates the story and immerses you deeper in it. You're not worried about doing math or, or what kind of check, did I pass, did I fail? It's enhancing and telling the story with every roll. In order to provide the wide range of different characters that one might encounter in Edge of the Empire, we came up with a very dynamic and interesting way to develop characters, and you'll see that right at the very beginning during character creation. In addition to selecting your race and an obligation, you're also going to pick a career. And a career is kind of an overarching template or approach that your character takes in the pursuit of his livelihood. 
You could be a bounty hunter, you could be a smuggler, or you could be an explorer or a colonist. There's six different careers to choose from, and each one of those careers has three specializations at the beginning that you can focus your character even more. So a bounty hunter has the gadgeteer, the assassin, and the survivalist specializations to represent all the different ways a bounty hunter may, ac may accomplish their jobs. A bounty hunter may just decide to uh, kill his targets and bring them back dead, so he'd want to become an assassin. Or he might want to use a lot of tech and uh, cool toys to um, capture his prey, in which case he'd go for a gadgeteer. Well, each of these specializations offers even more career skills that you can use, but also a number of unique and interesting talents. And talents are where characters really start to become individual and, and exceptionally interesting. Each specialization is represented by a tree of related talents. And the talents appear in a grid and some of them are connected by lines. When you acquire a new talent, you can acquire any talent in the top row or any talent that is already connected via one of these lines to one you've already purchased. So over the course of this development, you're going to be building this branching path of specializations and abilities within that specialization that further define your role within the party and the sorts of things that you are especially good at. The presence of the Force is one of the most defining elements of Star Wars, and you can rest assured that the Force is in each and every one of the games in this line because it's just too important. The Force is represented in all three books. Uh, in Edge of the Empire, you can choose the specialization tree uh, Force-Sensitive Exile. As a Force-Sensitive Exile, you are not going to be as powerful as a full-fledged, trained Jedi. But what you can do is begin to build and hone these powers. You can take that same character and build him into a Jedi. You can create a Force-sensitive character in Edge of the Empire, play him all the way through into Age of Rebellion where more Force possibilities will open up, as well as increase the Force powers that you've gained in Edge of the Empire, and then play that same character all the way through into Force and Destiny and complete your training and become a full-fledged Jedi. As the different game lines come out and each one is supplemented with their own accessories, players can decide to mix and match however they want. The player characters from Age of Rebellion could easily play alongside characters from Force and Destiny, and then later on add characters from Edge of the Empire, or mix and match however the different players want to be able to tailor it to exactly the sort of Star Wars experience everybody at the table wants to enjoy. I've been working on this project for a year and a half, and it certainly had a lot of challenges then that time. However, last year at Gen Con, when we first announced we were doing this, and then we ran demos of Edge of the Empire for people who wanted to come by and play the game at our booth, Running those demos was um, some of the most fun I've had at Gen Con. Having people sit down, they've never played the game before, um, they have no idea what's going on, and by the end of the game, they're assembling their dice, um, dice pools, they're making checks, and they're telling me what they're doing with the advantage and threat they generate. They're telling me how the story goes. This is incredibly satisfying. That's really one of the exciting parts about this too. Not only is it going to be this amazing 400 plus page hardcover book, but at the same time we're also releasing the dice pack and the Game Master screen. Uh, the Game Master's kit is going to make it even easier to run the game, and it even includes an adventure so that players can really dive into the action right away. For those players new to role playing, the Edge of the Empire beginner game is a great place to start. So the beginner game includes its own set of narrative dice, and the adventure is built so that by the time the players are done with their adventure, they've learned all the basic mechanics. And from there, they can either continue those adventures with all of the information found in the core rulebook, or they can create their own characters and craft their own stories to explore that Edge of the Empire experience that this first book in the series is going to deliver. <laughs>